So the other kind of theme that we followed in the Upanishads is about desire, right? What is it that you desire? And, and, and these two things go together, renunciation and desire go together. The, the renunciation that we're talking about is giving up certain kinds of desires. Bad desires, what we call bad desires, what we've been calling bad desires, right? Getting up, giving up the desire for, for you know, more money, more things, more, more uh, you know, promotions at the job, more better relationships, more, more, more all the time. Give up those bad desires. Be, the, they're bad because the things that we're, the, the objects that we're desiring will not bring us what we desire. They won't bring us what we desire, what, which is what? Happiness. True happiness, true satisfaction, true santosha. And it isn't in the things, it isn't in the money, it isn't in the job, is it? It, it isn't in, even in the certificates that you get from yoga teacher training courses. Even that won't bring you happiness, believe it or not. It's not in like becoming a YSI certified staff, staff teacher like Stephanie just did. You know, she's already happy. She doesn't need any of that kind of stuff. It's just like bonus for her. She's figured out the real way to be happy. It's not connected to the outside. It's connected to the changing of the mind. Yoga is chitta vritti narodaha. Stop the way the mind is turning things around. And seeing, thinking that the externals will bring you happy, happiness. And stop desiring those, you see? Stop desiring the bad desires. No, doesn't mean that you can't, you know, have money or work at a job or go to the movies or something like that. It just means that you, you understand th that those things have limited value when it comes to the happiness project, right? You know, the, 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 the next 3D movie that's, you know, block blockbuster movie will have the same trajectory that the last one did. It'll, it'll be just like, you know, Pirates of the Caribbean 4 or whatever it was. Where, you know, you put on the glasses and you watch Johnny Depp and it was like awesome for like two hours. And then it's like over. And then it's over. It's like, well, what's next, you see? I already saw Johnny Depp. I already saw Pirates of the Caribbean. What, what now? What do I see now? Well, well, now it'll be, you know, whatever it is. The next, the next 3D movie that'll come out. And then, you know, you, you, you might want to go to it. You might want to say, like, you know, I'm tired. I've, I've been working hard at my practice all week. But I'll take a break and I'll go see it and have fun. Have enjoy it. Enjoy it, you see? But and you will enjoy it if you have the right attitude towards it. You'll enjoy it a lot more. If you just so it's just a two-hour ephemeral thing. And, and just understand it like that. You know? It's just like that with everything. It's not just movies. With the next you know, meal out at the new Thai restaurant that opens up in town. Doesn't mean you can't go to the Thai restaurant. But just recognize it's going to be a two-hour experience. An hour and a half little pleasure experience, and then it'll be over. Yeah? And don't get, like, overly attached to these things as having some kind of legs, you know, permanence. That they'll, that, that they'll you know, bring you some kind of long-lasting pleasure. That's just a flip on the screen, on the pleasure screen, over, over and over again. And a little bit of wisdom goes a long, long way when it comes to this kind of thing. Yeah? So these are preconditions, the changing of the, moving desire from bad desire to good desire. You know, moving the renunciation, getting the renunciation in place so that you can start desiring the true sources of happiness a lot more, you see? Like I said, I think earlier, we do what we want, we do what we think is important to do. We actually do that, you know? It's like people who are sometimes like chronically late all the time, you know, like, well, they just don't think it's important enough to be on time. If, 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 if you're like me and you have a doctor, I have a doctor in New York, I used to have one, and, uh, you know, you got to wait like eight months to get an appointment with that doctor. Guess what? You're going to be on time. If you have like a plane to catch, you know, and you really want to get to where you're going, you're on time, you see? You know, because you want to be. You think it's important enough, right? So it's, it's you know, this is, this is a lot easier than developing a lot of discipline. You know, it's, discipline's hard. You know, it's, it's hard. How about just developing some good old desire? So, you know. And good desire, not bad desire, you see. Desire happiness. Desire true happiness. Understand where true happiness comes from. And desire the means that will bring you that. Desire your practice. Desire strongly your practice. It's the, it, it is the root of, your, of what you really want. You really want happiness. So getting it straight, getting understanding what's, what you really desire. 
Renunciation will come naturally. The renunciation will be easy. And the effort, the virya, the, the joyful effort, will, will, it, it will become second nature. You will do it automatically because you really want to, you see. If you really want to, you really, you, you really do it. And then it will become like play, like lila, not like work, you see. If it's still like work, you know, you haven't desired it enough. If it still seems like work, it's just because of the, de the desire is not like amped up enough. Amp up the desire, the good desire, right? And remember what it is that you ultimately desire, which is the end of desire, right? The, the satisfaction, santosha, contentment, which is, is the end of desire. Desire that. Desire that strongly and work towards it. And one of the ways to work towards it is to practice it. One of the ways to work for it is to practice it. Practice contentment. Practice saying everything's okay. Say, practice saying yes. Be the great yay-sayers instead of the naysayers. You know, mostly we're naysayers, right? No, no, not this, not that. I didn't want that. I didn't want mushrooms. You know, no. Right? And, and just, just be affirmative. Just say yes. Just say yes. And, and if you don't like it, say yes to it and say, and, and thank you. I, now I know what I need to change. You see, that's also affirmation. You can see, say even yes to no. Okay? You can say even yes to no. You know what I mean? Do you know what that means? You say yes to even things that you, that, that you want to change. Thank you, I have an opportunity to change these things. Yes. Yes, I'll take that opportunity. See? Yes, I, I, I realize where these things are coming from. I realize that, you know, this negative thing, this mushroom experience has happened because of my karma. So I will, say, I will say yes to the fact that I can change this. Maybe next time I'll get pizza. See? <laughs> but you, you, won't, you won't change it by, by being negative all the time. See? That's not the way to change things. To say yes. Yes. I'll try to change. I'll try to change it. I'll try to change it the way things really are, you know, working. I'll try to give things to people that they like to eat. See? Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Yes and thank you. Okay? How's that? That's your, that's your mantra, okay? Om, say Om. Om. Yes. yes. Thank you. Thank you. Ahum. Ahum. Right, here you go. <coughs> yes, thank you. Okay, start living like that. You will know if you're progressing in your yoga. You will know because you'll be happy. You'll be happy. And, and if you're not getting happier, you're not doing your yoga properly. It's just as simple as that. It's just as simple as that. So, so be happy. Practice happiness. Practice your yoga. And, and, and take advantage of this, this unbelievable, precious, rare opportunity that we all have. To actually do it. You see? To actually do what they talk about in these ancient texts. Of, of finding your true self. Your true self is a happy self. Your true self is a perfect self. See, try, and you have the opportunity to find it, you see. It would be a lot harder if you were living like, like almost everyone else on, on this earth. A lot harder, okay? A lot harder. Y you could be among the three billion people who are living on $2.50 a day. How would that work out for you, you see? When it comes to like these advanced spiritual goals. How would that work out? Yeah, all your time is thinking about survival. And then, you know, for, the, for many of the rest of us, it's all their time is thinking about, you know, Entertainment possibilities, or you know, the the job, or the money, or the relationships. People are, you know, people are taken in by all these things, and they don't, they don't really have the possibility that you do. You're, they're not like you. You're not like them. You are, you, you have at least the potential to be leading a very different kind of life, a life that's really designed to to fulfill the goal, the goals of yoga. And you, and, and and it's, it's a little bit. Um, it would be like. They say in the Buddhist text, it would be like finding an island. You know, maybe there's an island on the middle of the lake here, and it was made of nothing but gemstones. You know, diamonds, rubies, emeralds, crunch, crunch, crunch. It's, you know, all, all just precious diamonds and stuff. And then finding that island and then getting back in your boat and going home without taking anything from it. It would be like that, you know, to, to waste this opportunity that we have. So fill up your pockets. <laughs> fill, them, fill them up. Don't waste, the, uh, don't waste the amazing thing that you have found somehow. Y your karma brought you this, this amazing opportunity. Don't waste it. <laughs>